We're delighted to offer you a short video on SEND support, which is really about getting the right support in school for your child. Quite often when you get a diagnosis, it's very difficult to know what a school is supposed to do to help you and to encourage your child to access the curriculum. We're delighted to have Cecile Remy from the Kids Sendias service to actually explain some of this to you. If I can hand over to Cecile. Every school, whether it's a school funded by the local authority, an academy school or an independent school, has to follow the SEN Code of Practice. The SEN Code of Practice has been written in September 2014 to reflect the changes in the law that were put in place to implement the new education, health and care plans. Now, the Code of Practice makes it very clear that when a child has got special educational need, the teacher, the SENCO at the school, also called the inclusion manager, have to look at four broad areas of need for that child. One area is sensory and physical, which is any physical need with, with mobility, or maybe sensory processing difficulties, such as difficulty hearing and processing sound, or maybe processing touch, also movement. Language and communication is another of those broad areas of need. And when a child may have a autistic spectrum disorder, that's very important. It's both the interaction, the communication, as well as more specific aspects of language, such as maybe being able to retrieve certain words, understanding instruction. Another broad area of need is social and emotional need. When a child is anxious or the child maybe doesn't know how to interact with his peers or the other teacher, it does affect the learning. And therefore, the school has to put in place some support to help them in that area. Finally, the last broad area of need is cognition and learning. This is usually assessed by an educational psychologist and it has to do with things like memory, pay, being able to pay attention to things, and we look at how the child access the curriculum in areas such as math and English. Now, the Code of Practice also speaks about uh, a plan that the Senko, the teacher, in consultation with the parents and the child, have to put in place. That plan, it goes through four steps. The first one is assess, then plan, do and review. The first step, assess, is obviously trying and understanding what the needs of that child are. The second is planning the type of interventions that can be put in place. Then doing, so putting those in place, and then reviewing them. And that stage is very important as everybody needs to know and understand whether the strategies are actually helping the child or if actually the needs of that child are greater or different from what was first thought. Therefore, this is a cycle that sometimes has to be repeated several times. And here I would like to show you a few different types of intervention that can be put in place through this SEN support plan. For example, there can be small group work, there can be a special learning program that may be um, recommended by a specialist, there can be extra help from a teacher or learning support assistant, some material equipment such as maybe a wobbly cushion or writing slope, there can be observation and recording to try and understand exactly what is it that the child is struggling with. Some peer support may be in the playground at our more informal times uh, during the school day. Some help from an educational psychologist and some maybe physical or personal care depending on the need of the child. So all those things can be put in place. It's not prescriptive and it's depending on the need of the child. The last thing that's important to understand uh, when thinking about a support plan for a child is how it is funding. The first thing that uh, uh, one needs to know is that every child uh, in England receives a certain amount of funding that's called the age-weighted pupil unit. It's depending on the age of the child as well as where the school is situated. Then the Senko. Uh, has access to a certain amount of funding that's called SEN support funding and that they can use as they see fit uh, to put in place those um, SEN support plans that I've just described. 
that funding, when as a parent you may uh, be asked to meet with the Senko or the teacher at the school, that is what is going to be used to uh, put in place the SEN support plan. Uh, finally, and I will talk about that a bit later, it may just be that this support plan is not enough. It's important to know that there need to be clear evidence that um, the assess plan review, do and review cycle has been gone through several times in order to access a higher level of funding. And at that stage, it may be that this child will be eligible uh, for an education, health and care plan. There is a clear uh, timeline to uh, request uh, an education health and care plan the local authority to assess whether or not the child would actually benefit from being supported by such a plan.